Here with me I have uh, Gaius Worthington. He is one of the co-founders of Fluidime, and um, we're going to be uh, introducing the company to a relatively new audience, the agribusiness world. And I think we'll find through the course of the interview and others that we'll do that uh, you've got a product and an application that, that really uh, is going to be very useful in this, uh, this industry that we know as agriculture. So let's first of all learn a little bit about you and the company. I understand you're one of the original founders. Uh, what is it that motivated you to start Fluidine? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it's a, there's, it's a, there's, a, there's a long version that I'll spare you. <laughs> um, I'll give you the short version. Um, for reasons that I, I really can't explain, and the and truth is I, I don't fully understand myself, um, I just became obsessed with the idea of build, building a company when I was 19 years old, I was walking down the street mm -hmm. in, uh, here in Palo Alto. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I grew up in Alaska, in a little village up there, came to California to get educated, had no intention of staying here or, or certainly doing uh, company building, but uh, I was walking down the street and one minute, like literally an instant, I was, like I was hit with a bolt of lightning and from that moment on, my future was defined. I knew from that moment on that what I was supposed to do was try to build a company that could contribute in a variety of different ways to a variety of different industries. So um, from that point on, I set about figuring out um, how to do this and get trained by people who knew how to do it. And a very good friend of mine uh, that I went to college with, Steve Quake, who's a brilliant scientist, he and his group at Caltech came up with a really a fundamental innovation and breakthrough in material science which led to the creation of Fluidime. Mm -hmm. So that's the short version. Well, Fluidime the company, uh, I, I know we're going to be talking to people who aren't very familiar with mm -hmm. this, so tell us what Fluidime does. I mean, you've got a, a, essentially a core technology that sure. drives your business, and which I find fascinating. And uh, if you can, uh, give us an idea of, of what that technology is and you mentioned industries, plural. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, where have you started uh, yeah. using this first and, and then where has it grown? And I'll try to connect that to the agribusiness world as well as I, as I explained. So the way to think about what we do is, um, is uh, to use an analogy. So, and the analogy that we commonly use is electronics. So when the microchip was invented, fundamentally what it did is it took um, a giant computer that was made out of vacuum tubes and cables made all those components very small and put them onto a chip. And in so doing, made electronics much more high performance, much more affordable. Um, it, it, it's that kind of innovation that is how a, um, um, a tractor that, that plows a fields today is guided by GPS. Well, the, the chips that, that run the GPS are because of that innovation. Mm -hmm. So we do a similar thing for biology. If you look and see how biology is done today at very high throughput, you would see machines that look an awful lot like those old vacuum tube computers. They're not computers, they're, they're biological entities. They, they, instead of having test tubes, they have, or pardon me, instead of having vacuum tubes, they have arrays of test tubes mm -hmm. and hoses instead of cables. Um, and we take all that fluidic stuff, those hoses and test tubes and everything that does, you take to the biology, make it extremely small and put it onto a chip. So as a point of reference, the, the chip here I'm holding in my hand this is what we call a chip. This chip has about as much plumbing as a thousand room hotel room. If you think about plumbing as pieces of pipe in between flanges or, or welded joints or, and, and valves that would be in the, in the bathrooms or in the kitchens uh, and, then piece, and then reservoirs that would hold water, there's about as much plumbing on this chip is in a thousand room hotel room. So we just really disruptively take plumbing and make it very small. And in so doing, you can do extremely high throughput biology very affordably and very easily. So what does that do for agribusiness? Um, there have been major breakthroughs in genetics. Um, the commonly you know, known things about how people use genetics are things like you know, the OJ Simpson trial and, and things of that nature. Um, but um, what you can do with genetics is you can understand, for example, when a, when a cow is born, um, what's its genetic potential? Is it, is it likely to be the, you know, is it, is it, is it, can, can, you, can you take care of it? Can you feed it in a way such that it's gonna become the highest quality beef? Um, same thing for a dairy cow. 
um, when you grow a seed, um, can you can you ensure that it has the properties that you want to sell it for? That it would grow a really beautiful tomato, and that you could uh, grow it um, in the Central Valley of California, or you could grow it, you know, in the plains of Kansas or you know, the, and the like. So you can test those things now with genetic information, and so people who are producing these products can ensure that they have the highest quality before they actually had a chance to to demonstrate that. You know, how, how do you know a calf is going to grow up to be you know, a real high quality animal? How do you know the seed is going to blossom into something that's really high value? Well, genetics can tell you an awful lot about that. To date, it just hasn't been affordable. It's too complicated. You know, I'm sure you can imagine how people view biology and you probably conjure up an image of test tubes and people in white coats and and uh, you know, putting putting you know, thing, red red reagents in one tube and blue in another and shaking things around. Well, that's not far from the truth, you know, and and that's obviously not something that you're going to use, you know, in a feed lot. It's not something that you're going to use, you know, at a place where you're collecting seeds. It just it, it's crazy. But uh, what we've done is we've taken that complicated biology and we've miniaturized it and put it onto these things so that you can do it very cheaply, very inexpensively. And so these incredible breakthroughs in genetics that are really valuable to the agribusiness community are now accessible. So um, we got started in this field with salmon. Um, so, and ironically, um, in my upbringing in Alaska, I was a commercial fisherman. And, that's, and we wrestled our livelihood from the ocean. So I have an affinity for this, this whole agribusiness. You know, when I, when I would explain people, when I came to California, people would say, what's commercial fishing? And I'd say, well, you know, it's kind of like farming, you know, but you know, you're, you're really having to deal with, the, with nature. You're having to really wrestle your livelihood away from, uh, from, a, from, from some difficult circumstances. So although I've never farmed, I feel a certain amount of affinity for the challenges that those, those people face. And I feel like I have some sense of what those challenges are like. And um, it turns out that one of the first applications for this technology was in, in understanding where the salmon are gonna go when they come home to spawn. And if you can test the you know, population of salmon as they're coming home and predict where they're gonna go, then you can make sure that the fishermen are located in just the right spot to catch the most fish, and you protect the places that are going to you know, not have many fish, so you don't you know, make sure those rivers are are, uh, are available for another year. And so our technology was first used there in a really kind of breakthrough way to to, to uh, uh, manage fisheries in Alaska and elsewhere. And that's really migrated now into seeds and livestock, and and we're really. You know, back to your earlier question about multiple industries, um, of course we are, we're, we're deploying our products into really what you would think about as traditional research. But I have to tell you one of the most rewarding things is, is to see the use of our technology in other industries, you know, like you know, the management of wildlife and like you know, agribusiness where it's really contributing to people's livelihood. You know, that, that's a, that's a, and, and particularly in this environment now to know that your your technology is making it easier for somebody to make a living making it easier for a company that's trying to thrive in that in, in that environment to you know to both thrive and survive that that's a that, that, that that's particularly rewarding for us all here well I really uh, appreciate you uh, guys taking time to talk with us and give us a little bit of background on the company and uh, as one of the founders uh, especially. Well, I'm looking forward to learning more myself about Fluid Dime as we're here today uh, doing these interviews. So from the uh, Fluid Dime headquarters here, I'm Chuck Zimmerman reporting.